Hallelujah. Father, we thank you because we have come to know that it's by the ministry of your word that you distribute resources. Therefore, I receive that which is mine by the hearing of faith in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed are my eyes for the see and my ears for the hear. And therefore, my heart understands in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You're welcome. Tell somebody you're welcome to church. Praise the Lord. I hope we're all doing well. Everybody looks beautiful. If you don't have neighbor, talk to the spirit. Just imagine one angel sitting beside you. Praise the Lord. I just want to thank God again for this opportunity to stand before us. I do not take it lightly. Um, I want to also appreciate Pastor DG for uh, giving me this opportunity. Thank you so much. You know, um, you know, Pastor DG has always been um, <clears throat> a very interesting person in terms of, uh, you know, he has a way of um, of cornering you when you are doing your best, you know, to just stay away. <laughs> But, you know, um, and I've often noticed something, like I said, you know, God has a way of um, locating the moment that you are, you are the busiest and just deciding that, okay, this is the moment, <laughs> you know, that we need you, you know. And um, I just want to thank God because it's always an opportunity. And I bless God for the leadership of Pastor Didi Kuromi and all that uh, God is doing through him and DDK. Please let's put our hands together for <laughs> Amen. Of course, I will appreciate my wife too. You know? <laughs> Please let me put our hands together for her because really, she makes life easy for me. And I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful to you, my love. Thank you so much. Don't worry, I, I won't cry and I don't want anyone to cry. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, so um, this year we've been traveling light, and um, I hope we've been having wonderful, wonderful, me, I've been really, I mean, I've been having such a great time this year, um, you know, I mean, everyone that's been speaking to us, I, you know, most of, maybe you don't know sometimes, that even when we, people teach, they're also getting blessed as they're teaching. Sometimes you are teaching, you're like, God, this thing you're even saying, self, it's even blowing my own mind, you know, <laughs> praise the Lord, and you know, um, it's always a, a, a blessing. And one of the reasons why I believe God has been inspiring this direction of traveling light, you know, um, if you've also been following some of the um, economic series we've been doing in iLeap, don't worry, I'll try not to preach an iLeap message, you know. But if you've been following, one of the things you realize is that God, ex God wants us to, um, to drop a lot of weights because um, many of those weights, they make it difficult for believers to to endure what is coming. There's something coming. You understand what I'm saying now? But I think God foresaw this and then decided to inspire us, uh, our leaders. And then, you know, when we started to hear Travel Light, some of what is inspiring that I believe is that God indeed intends that um, when, you're, when you see that something is coming, um, and of course, it's a long journey. The only thing, what's important at that moment is to, is to try to optimize, you know, such that you can take the journey and, you know, face whatever is before you in a very graceful way. And that's, I believe, one of the things why um, it's inspiring that direction. And even everything we've been talking about, if you've been following most of the God and Cedar series in Nilip, you realize that God is essentially saying we should boost our, you know, our spiritual value our economic value as a person, you know, irrespective of, of the money because there is currently a destruction of money, you know, going on right now all around the world. And people before have their very eyes are seeing difficulty encroaching, you know, into their day-to-day -day lives. But in moments like this, you know, when everything seems like it's all coming to a gulf, is when the Lord is telling you, you know, to take what? the deep, like buy into yourself, grow your value. Some of the things that you will not do, you know, before you take for granted, 
you know, praying, studying, reading, you know, improving yourself or deploying yourself. Because the earlier you realize that God does not spend naira, God does not spend dollars, he spends you. He spends what? He spends you. And then you, the faster you can try to, you know, immediately convert yourself, you know, to the money. Tell somebody sitting beside you, you are the money. You are the money, not the one in your pocket. Hallelujah. Let's go to Romans uh, this morning. Uh, this morning, I want to also, I, I want to um, just build on what um, we've been learning. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about faith. And um, we would explore one very interesting concept in God that I believe that um, is also very critical for this period. If we look at one of the things that is very unique to our message in this church, you will know that, yes, we are faith people. But what is faith? And how does that connect to, you know, what God is doing in our lives and some of the circumstances we face? Because I, I perceive that um, there's a whole lot of hardship Let's look at Romans chapter, um, I'll start from Galatians 3, please. Galatians 3, 5 to 9. If you can give me Galatians 3, I would love that. It will be, very, it will be as brief as possible. Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does it do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? And you go on. Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Therefore, know that only those who are of faith are what? The sons of what? Of Abraham. Again, let's go over that again. What did he say? Only those who are of faith are the sons of Abraham. So there is a possibility for those to have those who are not of faith. So they, 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 you, you need to know that dissection. And one of the things that happen in Christendom, if you follow the sequence of um, things, is the fact that a lot of people begin in faith. But over time, we tend to transcend, you know, to a, 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 a regimented, you know, lifestyle of just trying to, to be. And then we start to build um, a sense of, you know, a kind of a self-righteousness you know, a sequence of activities that we just want to balance our life on and just be sailing on smoothly. You know, that kind of a thing. But God is, is occasionally, God knows that that state does not um, promote the value of the kingdom. Hallelujah. And deliberately, deliberately, even as much as it is not particularly wrong, but to grow the value of the kingdom, it is important that believers understand that every step of the way. The Bible calls faith to faith. You understand what I'm saying? Now? So the whole idea is that you discover faith, then that faith matures. Somehow you want to settle there, you know, create a set of uh, regi a lifestyle, you know, where you just want to balance there. But then God himself comes again and kind of, kind of disrupts things. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that it can move you to another journey of faith. Hallelujah. Are you with me? So, the, this concept is so big to God that he will do everything and anything to ensure that, you know, he, he provokes the system in that direction. The Bible says that only those who are of faith Let's look at Romans chapter, um, chapter 4. And you will see the emphasis here again. Talking about the fact that there is, there is faith. And then there is every other thing we do just to go by. The Bible says in Romans chapter 4, verse 3. Romans chapter 4, verse 3. He said, for what does the scripture say? It started by we're saying, what then shall we say? Abraham, our father, has found faith. For what has found according to the flesh. For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. And that, that's exactly where you start to know that you are 
peaking in value. You start to know that you're kind of getting to, uh, you know, a max when you can trace a boasting. When you, can st when you start to boast, you know, in some of the things you do as they are a basis for your outcome, then you are peaking. You are getting to the peak of your value. Praise the Lord. So the Bible says that, because when you look at Abraham, I've always said that if, if many of us had the life of Abraham today, we will be big, you know, we, you will be made, you'll be okay. So there is a conscious activity by God to essentially, you know, re help us to realign from the ability to boast in our works so that we can realign with the journey, with faith, with that disruption, you know, take that disruption as an opportunity to step into a higher grade of faith. Because Abraham could have just been a rich guy. Yes, he did a lot of exploits. But I told you that the peak of your faith. That is, when it comes to people who maxed, to max in your faith <laughs> means to overcome death. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. Meaning that your, you know, no matter what it is you see as your achievement, if you have not gotten to a point in which you can re-engineer death, reverse death, you know, turn death around, you know, overcome death. You have not gotten to the peak. So you could imagine Abraham, if he was just going to live by his achievements and he didn't go into the Isaac journey, he would not have stumbled on that truth. The truth that became today the foundation of our faith. And which is that the Bible says it came to a conclusion. It came to a discovery that God can raise the dead. That kind of discovery cannot happen with a regimented, you know, lifestyle of works. No matter how well you organize your life or you live well. There are, because God deliberately upset the system to provoke who we are. You understand what I'm saying now? To really come out. Because even he himself cannot operate until me and you bring forth certain truth that form the basis for the next level of operation on earth. Because how come Jesus was not even good? Jesus had to come. That's why when Jesus came, he came after those order. God had to line up those thought flow across the generation to connect Christ to those thought flow. Because there cannot be Christ. If somebody had not discovered at first that it was possible for God to raise the dead. Because someone had to come to that discovery before it happened. So that the day it happened, people can believe Praise the Lord. So, when Pastor was teaching us about our purpose as witness, it's big because your, the truth that is going to come out of your life as an eventuality is a foundation of the operation of God for a generation that is yet to be born. Are you with me? Stay with me. So, God will do everything to sell you from faith to faith, from face to face, until you hit that truth. Truth that you can die for. Truth that Abraham became so convinced about that he was willing to lay down Isaac. Because he, he was, you don't understand. Do you know what it means to go and slaughter your only son? 
for that to happen, you must be on another plane of truth. So, we are carriers of this kind of truth. And your entire destiny will continue to sail towards this reality, towards this. Because once you hit that max, like, God will just free you. Like, you can be happily, you can be happy ever after. But if you have not hit that max, be sure he will continue to trade you in. For the next level of faith. For the next level. For the next level. The Bible says in verse 3, it says, for what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. The Bible says, now to him who walks, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. The meaning of that is that it is okay for you to actually... Um, have a set of works and activities you do to achieve the results that you have. Are you with me? Huh? And there is a lot of people doing so good because there is a set of, of practices, you know, taught in schools, taught in the law, even taught in churches that you should follow so that you will what? Have this kind of result. And you do them like you follow after those regular things because you you, you root your results in your ability to follow those things. Are you with me? God is saying that, okay, fine, it's okay. But the results and whatever you get out of it is a debt. You don't understand. You don't know what, what is debt. Debt is basic. Let me say it in Yoruba, basic. Meaning that whatever result that you get as a result of following those practices is not counted as like profit. Hello? <laughs> it's counted as a payable to someone else. It's there in the scripture now. Do you get what I'm talking about? So, coming into faith is so important in your journey and you must expect, expect it that, and do everything to identify as a son. And it doesn't happen easily because, yes, we want to be comfortable. We want to be convenient and nobody, I mean, as, as easy as it is to talk about faith, <laughs> trust me, it's never really that easy, really. I mean, it's not, you know. And how does faith begin? We've talked about the gospel. I mean, we say that over and over again that the gospel is what, what drives faith. It's the gospel that preaches and then you receive that faith. But it's possible for you to receive it and then translate it into just a, a set of a, a particular lifestyle and then you, you, you just stabilize, you know, in that place. It's not particularly in God's will because ultimately, whatever outcome you think you have, what starts to happen is you start to trust that lifestyle as a basis for your success or whatever you have and then you stay, stay there. And God doesn't like that. So, he takes that outcome and then he provokes the system so that you can move to another level of faith. Because righteousness, attaining to righteousness is like the ultimate in that sense. It's not the money or it's not the outcome that you're looking for, but that, they can, that God can testify that this is a righteous man. And for that to happen, there must be graduation from faith to faith. So the Bible is saying here that to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt that we have to pay back. So how does faith begin? Faith actually starts, you know, by looking for an opportunity to put God to work. Hello? Faith starts by, you know, it as if you you're looking at the earth, and then you are, you are conjuring in his presence, in place of prayer, in place of meditation. You understand what I'm saying now? Looking for an opportunity to actually put God to work. Allowing yourself to dream. 
creating hope that requires God to fulfill. Baiting yourself in the expectation of that hope, living for it, and taking small steps every day towards that dream, even though you know the step in itself can never add up to fulfill that dream. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. Because if it's not something to be ashamed of, like people you know that do, if it does not invoke despise, you are not in faith. Oh, yes. Ah, yeah, we're going to start something and then we're going to reach it. 10 million lives, you know. We're going to go global. We will reach every country of the earth. You know, sometimes even when you are saying that, your, your heart is collapsing inside of you. <laughs> you see the kid can feel me, you know. You know <laughs> your, your heart is collapsing inside of you. Because you know the people are looking at you and like, mm -hmm, okay, we've heard this before. <laughs> but you know, the Bible says that is needed. It's part of the equation. People must like give you the nose. So, it's something that I, 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 I believe that, and if you could imagine, if, if, you're, if you enter a little bit into God's mind, you start to see why, how that is important for the growth of the kingdom. Because again, it's almost like I'm just summarizing my message before I even get there, but it's fine. The bottom line is that it is not in achieving those things. Hello? Per se. But there is a truth that only you will discover in the process eh, of that operation. That truth eh, is cut out in gold. You know, and in TBC, I don't think we, I think, I, I hope we don't take for granted what we have here. You know, in the sense that, and I'm going to what we haven't said, because I know that even when we teach like this, I'm always persuaded that, you know, if you spend maybe two years in this ministry, you should literally be able to teach like this anyway. You know, but you know, yesterday there was a. I was even telling my. I said there was a tweet that somebody tweeted, and the person, you know, business school guys, lot of followers, you know, and only like guys when they are talking on Twitter, you just have to shut up. You know that kind of a thing. But the, <laughs> the person provoked online, the 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 faith journey in me rose up. He said, hey, there, are, "There are no Josephs, and that's um, something like um, how come." God did not reveal what's happening now to Joseph's. That where are the, you know, the person that quoted it as if, you know, the Josephs are not there. You know, that kind of a thing. <laughs> when I read that tweet, I could help. I just carried my phone. I said, look, there can be no Joseph if there is no dreaming Pharaoh. And there can be no Joseph when the Pharaohs only listen to MBA graduates and psycho fans. <laughs> <laughs> you know, out of nowhere, because it's not me, I, but you know, with the influencer, everything, man, a few minutes later, I just saw that the person has already tweeted what I tweeted back. This guy, you know, I just started seeing likes, and you know, it, it, that truth just, it just, it just got provoked. And it, it now started occurring to me that I don't think we understand what we are discovering as we sail this journey. Because you're going to carry, the, you know, the world is not after physical products. This is one thing we need to know today. I, I started to realize that. You know, you, yeah, you could, you could make money, you could do things, but I think what the world really needs is the truth. What the world really needs is the truth. When something is true, it is true. It doesn't matter the lips, the mouth that is coming, it's coming from. It is true. The Bible says, what is the advantage that me and you have? He said to us, what is committed what? The oracles of God. Meaning that if we are doing what we're supposed to do, it is us that should carry these truth capsules. You know, I said something on Thursday. I said, you see, Nigeria is the way it is because they are not listening to you. 
many of us, many, a lot of people are just, you're just boxed. You are boxed in with all the truth. But this nation has not given you the opportunity eh, to actually speak. I mean, just look at people we, we elect in the National Assembly. And you want Nigeria to change. And everybody's worried about president now. And I doubt if anybody here had there to be maybe assembly representative for their local government. Nobody. Oh, we have. Please, let us sit there and clap for them. Anybody like that. We're not doing this church uh, Christian Muslim thing. I'm just appreciating the fact. Go, don't go as Christian. Go as carriers of the truth. You know, there's a difference. Because I think people still need to realize that the truth is not religious. Hello? The truth is not religious. Jesus was the truth. He didn't call himself a Christian or a Jew. He said, I am the truth. The truth transcends boundaries. So it is the life of faith that allows you to prove the truth. When you find the truth, you can die for it because it is, it is you have proved it. You know this is true. And the world will stand aside. Everything but the truth. The, every, that is, you know when the Bible says wisdom is the ultimate store of value. What do you, you know when you say that, look, you can have gold, you can have but truth, wisdom, they're all in the same family. Everything will balance, a, you know, that is, you might be down today, but if you carry the truth, ultimately the world will rebalance. Ultimately, for that truth to take its place. It might take years. It doesn't matter. But if it is the truth, it is the truth. This adventure of the truth is exactly what your faith enterprise or your life itself, whether your career, your marriage, your business, whatever it is, is designed to look for. So that you can become like a living embodiment of that truth. That is money as far as God is concerned. It is his own money. He spends it. Hallelujah. So, when we journey in our faith walk, we understand that we're coming to a point. Even though it is very difficult, it is never easy to come to this position. And every Christ, everything you will learn, every circumstance you find yourself, let me tell you today, is a deliberate orchestration of God to bring you to that state of mind. Hallelujah. Let's look at the book of Hebrews chapter 12. The Bible says that, so God uses a system that is not convenient for many. But you know, the reason that we are also believers and why regular fellowship is important is so that we can help continue to encourage ourselves, you know, through this, this the process in itself. Because really, isn't it? There's no, there's no reason why there should be gathering in the sense that you can be Christian. But it's occasionally necessary because of the transitioning process can be extremely difficult. So it's a process called chastening. And when this chastening happens, this is God deliberately. He has seen that, yes, you're a believer. You're okay. You are, you are in faith. And then somehow, your, the faith, because there is faith to faith, meaning that you must understand your faith in layers. Even the truth journey, the truth we're talking about, you don't just know it immediately. It's as if you are... You're digging different phases in God till you get to the heart of your purpose, of your existence, where you get to the... Because it is that truth, like what PDK taught us, that you become a witness to. Hello? So, God could see that this person is, is settling. <laughs> you know, he's settling too early. So, he orchestrates... A, a dynamic called chastening. name. 
You see, one of the things that, um, let's read verse 7. He said, if you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, first of all. So, <laughs> you can't escape. You are all partakers. <laughs> of which all have become partakers. Then, if you, are, if you don't want it, you are illegitimate. And not sons. Because you can, until you become a carrier of the truth, before you can be a son. Because the God component is now in you. And God can never, the, can, the truth will remain for all time. And so he said you will become sons. And that's what it means to be a son. He said, I perceive that in the end of time, God is really building us to something much more. But we must be conscious of this simple reality that God is building us towards a moment, you know, a truth that we will become carriers of. He says, so, if, but furthermore, we have had human fathers corrected us and paid them respect, shall we not much more readily be in, uh, be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? Bible says, for indeed, for a few days, chasing us as it seemed best to them. But he for our prophet. Now, take that word, our prophet. You now start to see that when God begins the process of chastening, it's almost like a deliberate trading of your current state that I think this person is settling. And we, there is some, you know, there has to be a form of, I, I, I believe in the person's ability to move to the next stage. And then I'm going to do a trading. <laughs> oh my God. Ah, Jesus is Lord. <laughs> you know, when it's time to chase things, of course, you already know who our businessman <laughs> the The only <laughs> business partner. <laughs> Of God in time of chastening. Please, who can guess who that is? It's the devil. Thank you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, I mean, and again, people keep saying, I hope one day he actually realizes that he is actually helping God. But, it, but because his soul is sold out to it, he can't help it. You know, so, one of the things that, um, now, like I said, when you get to a convenient state and to the point in which you will know because you will start to boast, there, there will be a boasting. We are trying. You know, you, you will come to some realization. <laughs> you will come there to a realization. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's normal, but... When it starts to get there, you will know that, oh boy, my, I'm, I'm, I'm my hair. I'm inflating. I'm inflating. <laughs> Supply is in purge. What, in, what inflates me? I'm getting inflated. <laughs> you will know when you get there. Ah, I'm inflating. But of course, nobody loves to get rid of that state because you want to be in the news. You want to be, you know, you know it feels great, you know, and you're inflating. But... God is just looking at you and just smiling. Ah, this boy is ripe. He's ripe. He's ripe. He's ripe. He's ripe. You know, and how does this happen? If you look at what mostly happens, um, if you have ever heard of, you know, um, when the people short in uh, a stock, you know, one of the things that happens is that, let's say I want to force the price of something to increase. I can I can, I can buy a lot of it out of the market, okay? So that the demand is still there and the price will go up. So FOMO will enter, all of you will go in. Then these guys will now 
release the what they have what they have stored. They just bring it back into the market, and the price will just crash. And then all of you just start selling. Ah, oh my! And then they will now collect all the supply in the sense that they, it's an engineering, a market engineering that takes place just to force you know prices to fall cheaper than the not original level, and then so that they can collect more of that asset. Are you with me? Sorry, it's not I leave. Let's just focus. So, but the bottom line here is that how does this happen? When you get the essentially the boasting that you start to see, when you get to a level in which you start to boast, it's not a, it's not necessarily it's it's the enemy deliberately inflating you. And the, the you know everything around starts to because it comes from praises from people from you know that kind of thing. So now the real challenge is that. Let's look at Job. The Bible says that, he said, God was the one that asked, he said, have you considered my servant Job? You know, for a long time, I didn't understand the problem Job had. Till I studied Job and understood what Job's problem was. Job was a righteous guy. Forget. He, he, concerning the works, he, he, he checked all the lists. Like, he, he checked everything. Um, he, he's not, he, he, does, he has one wife. He doesn't steal. He, does, he has all checked. To the point in which Job could boast that, look, in all these things, nothing. You can't. So, his boasting had gotten to the peak and he was rich. Ha! Say this guy is, is due for trading. <laughs> you know, so of course at that point it's like God now noticed that oh, okay the boss is, oh this guy is ready. We're like, have you considered this my guy? <laughs> you know when the Bible says be humble. When when the Bible says be humble, you know you understand what we're talking about. So that you are off the radar. You're just <laughs> ah. Because the day you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we are there. Ah, God will just like, okay, that guy popped up. He's ripe. Let's try and trade. And when he's doing his, uh, when he opens the stock meeting and the uh, market meeting, the devil will come down. Ah, that, how far we are trading souls here? That, okay, there's this guy. Have you, have, you, have you seen him? Have you seen this guy? Like, ah, guy was like, ah, it's not because you blessed him. I said, okay, right now, let's, because I, 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 of course, he is not aware that is the chastening of the Lord that is about to begin. The Bible says, for our profit. So the devil goes on his own rampage. God is buying long. The devil is selling short. He's trying to, he's trying to take a bit more of your soul. Because the moment he crashes your boasting, and you lose some of the things you have, you will start to devalue your own soul. You, you, because you're trying to size yourself up to, to your outcome. To, your to, the, to the fact that you can't boast again, your soul will shrink. And then you, you become, because of that, you get to a state where you are ready to sell yourself cheap. It's a technique of the enemy. But most of the time, if you are not, but the Bible says that we are not ignorant of what of his devices. And God grants us wisdom up front so that we can detect that, okay, this is the enemy and this is what is happening you are better equipped to get out of the problem. So, it crashes you. Your soul becomes lean. You, you, in most cases, people start to devalue themselves. Job was so... He, 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 go and listen to his testimony after that. He was full of boasting of who he was, of how he doesn't... He doesn't, uh, he doesn't sing. He doesn't even look at a girl. He, he had to write it down. I don't even look at women. Not to even talk of... His friends was like, ah, that Job has, is full of his self-righteousness. He had become... Do you know that after God finished with him? Because God saw a guy who had... You know, and this is the interesting part, what you have to learn. God is big on faith. People not using a series of works as a factor of boasting, and then you stay there. You know, by the time God, God started by blowing up his mind and showing Job 
and you know, a reality beyond his comprehension. In fact, by the time God finished with him, he said, I can see that you can do all things. And right now, in fact, the moment you, you after all my bragging, the first thing you told me when we started talking was, who is this person that, that darkens knowledge? Let's read that, please. As in, the moment Job heard God talk, at the end of the day, he said, now I repent in dust and ashes. That is, he had to, he had to come to a point in which he realized that, look, whatever it is I put together, or whatever set of works that guaranteed, you know, your achievement or your success, cannot equal coming to that place of realization eh, that God is deep and that he wants to move your discovery beyond the level of just staying at this point and then to the next point. Because he had to expand the mind of Job until Job came into that realization that, look, ha, on the basis of this faith to faith thing, I am actually guilty. And Job made that transition. Who is this who darken counsel by words without? You can imagine how the bragging. That is, you have bragged about how righteous you are. And God gave you that kind of response. You were humble. Job was now like, he had to tell him at the end that, well, that when I heard you speak, I have heard you by the hearing of hear. He said, actually, listen. Please let me speak. You said, I will question you and you will answer me. I have heard you by the hearing of here, but now my eyes see you. Therefore, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. This is Job before that. He, as far as he was concerned, his checklist of just living of righteousness and getting results by his life of righteousness was intact. But when God finished with him, broke all the all the stand. And this had to happen because there is Abraham. There is those who are of Abraham of faith. So God cannot create, allow a system to exist that a human will be able to boast in, hello, as a, as a factor in the results he's getting. It will crash the pattern. And this was the problem of the law when Jesus came. Because these guys had become so skillful at following the law, and then they've calculated God out of his own law. That God was already out, and they were following him, killing people, you know, enslaving people by this same law. And God was like, please, who wrote this law in the first place? Why did I even, what is this law for? I, I, I always smile at that part when they brought the woman caught in adultery. I'm like that. Are you guys kidding me? Like, so you decide, this is what you people are doing. With this law, you didn't understand the intention of the person who even wrote this law in the first place. That is not about this. God ultimately just wants people, the law exists, to essentially drive people to repentance. So Job got it hook, line, and center and got the message. And when the Bible says that this is does. For our profiting, it was true. Because the Bible says it at this latter end, he even doubled in value. This guy worked so hard because at the end of the day, the enemy trying to shut his soul so that he could acquire more of it. Of course, if you read it, there was a lot of battle. Job had cost, he had devalued a bit. He had continued to devalue himself. He could not, he could not, he could not find any value himself anymore. But he held on to his integrity, but I still remember that I follow all these rules. And I, I, I so he, he, he couldn't understand. This will happen from time to time. And you have to watch out for the wiles of the enemy when it comes to his target on you. And when, like I said, when he lays his eyes on you, you will know. Because almost everything starts to break down, despite the fact that you are following the rules. When the boasting starts, then you are accumulating debt. When the boasting starts, then 
you start to accumulate what? Debt. And debt, when it comes to a point, it must be what? <laughs> Repaid. So, faith, the workings of faith are a... Sometimes, like I said, we can't avoid the chastening. The only thing that we've learned is that you can reduce the period. Are you with me? You can help quickly reduce the period. By humbling yourself very quickly. Loving people who you consider enemies. And because that's what a lot of people do. Right now, you have a list of people you can't forgive. You can see what, you know, they've been teaching us. You can't forgive. You don't give. That's, you don't forgive. You don't give. Then you don't give thanks. You know, just write it down. Failing on every level. The Bible talked about Esau. If you look at verse 16, it said, Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one muscle of bread sold what is bad right. So his soul was shortened, and the guy sold out. He took his loss. You, have you ever done that in, when you are trading cryptocurrency? Ah, the market has crashed. And yeah, you bought it at five naira, but now it's at one naira. I said, well, boy, please, just give me whatever I can get and get me get out of here. You know, he, he took his loss. Like we are saying on Thursday, he, he, he all refused to, to buy the dip. He didn't buy the dip. The guy sold out. That, I beg, just let me, I, I can't do this anymore. Don't let the enemy drive you to this point. Hallelujah. Don't let them drive you to this point. That is his wiles. That is his strategy. He wants to shorten your soul. He wants to reduce you in value. And then you will know them when they come. The boys. The guys. I'm talking about the sharks. They want to trade. Oh yeah now. Watching intensively for that time when your value will drop. Even you, you have condemned yourself. You cannot find much value in who you are. They told you growing up that you didn't have value. You couldn't, you can't, you can't stand on anything. But I think one of the reasons Jesus had to die was to continue to let you know that, look, at your lowest low, at your weakest week, huh? I will buy you, your deep, I will buy it. To the point of laying down his life. So you must take solace and comfort in the fact that God has staked his son on your behalf. So that no matter how much things drop, you can always reference the cross. It's staked for you. It's a staking. It's a, it's a backing value. I don't know what I'm talking about. Because when staking happens, you put something down as a backing value so that you are comfortable that even though there are losses or gain, that itself becomes something you can fall back on. Are you with me? And that is what the cross is. It's staking. It's an evidence. As long as you've not, if you've not seen the glorious Jesus rise from the sky, that staking remains. And a guarantee for you, that your value remains. No matter what it is, don't let the enemy shorten you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's finish in Hebrews. Let me go to verse 11. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, after words, it what yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those, pay attention, to what? To those who have what? Been trained by it. So, you see how God improves your value. 
Essentially, the whole idea is to give you training. Because after the training is over, he unleashes you again. Hello? And at that point, your value has increased. The market will have to adjust itself eh, to your new state. Because you allowed yourself to go through the training. Jesus went through the same thing. Most of people just thought he just appeared. Or you saw him at 30. By then, he was starting at 30. He had failed. He had risen. He had, he had gone through all those. Because if the Bible says there is nothing, forget it. Any temptation, whatever trial that you're going through, he has no face. Meaning that his life as a carpenter must have been mad with disappointments, you know, with even him, you know, inefficient. Bible says he had to be trained too. Learned obedience through the things that he suffered. So he, he too had to come into a training, into a point in which he could, he could lay hold on the truth. He came out and said, what, I am the truth. It, that one didn't happen when he was born. It happened in the process of when he was being a carpenter and then following all that. And then he came to that realization. He deployed. So you must rise from faith to faith. Move from faith to faith. Understand this principle from faith to faith. When the trial starts, you must know where humility comes in. You understand how these dynamics work. You must humble yourself in procedures of forgiveness. You know, calling people that oh, have wronged you. Oh, this is what happened. Settle those calls. Hello? Okay? Stay away from things that you know will decrease the value of your soul. You know, like a sinful lifestyle, habitual sinning. You know, you must stay away and try to preserve that ability to, to trade into your next level. Hello? You must give thanks. Because that's another thing. You might even be doing everything right, but you don't give thanks. You don't know that God covets praises. And praises are worth much more in trying times than when there is money. I mean, <laughs> is that, doesn't that make sense? I'm God and look at this person just as the widow's might left. And then he's dancing and worshipping and giving glory. And then somebody has private jet and all that and he's dancing and giving glory. Whose praise will be worth more to God? It's a, it's a no-brainer. So those moments, you must capitalize on them. Do not waste them. Don't let the enemy shorten you. Don't let him reduce your value to zero. So that ultimately you are now like Esau. Because that's where the word fornication came from. It's shortening. It's your, your soul, you've, you've reduced yourself. You now change yourself for cheap. You know, one stupid boy or something, we also come and tell you some small thing and then you just sell yourself. That is not your portion. You must have value. You must have value. Your value is for nations. You are bigger than who you are. You are bigger than who you are. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you.